Cannabis federal legalization has a slight delay, but then again, it really doesn't. Also, I want to speak on a subject I spoken with with Tracy, who I had a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call about two weeks ago, unfortunately, or about a week ago. Unfortunately, that video, we were having some technical issues. Not going to go ahead and post that, mainly because about 65 to 75% of it didn't even record. Nonetheless, I'm trying to recreate some of that in the aggregate. One of the questions that Tracy had, uh, if you'll recall, Tracy's a financial planner living in, he lives in the Washington, Washington State in right around Seattle area. Um, the question he had was about uplisting and incentives and things like this. And I spoke on that subject and I want to touch on that. But first, let's talk about the very first subject, a delay of sorts. Now, about a year ago, nine months ago, and then six months ago, I really started kind of laying out what I expect this year for federal legal legalization of cannabis. I gave a time frame, and the time frame I kept looking at was Congress is not, they did not in 20, January 2021 show up and get to work. I, they wouldn't ever in a million years. And I know a lot of people had bought into that thinking that, oh, the cannabis legalization is going to happen right away. No. Cannabis legalization is going to happen at the very last moment. In August, Congress will break. And that break allows Congress to go out and get reelected. This is a midterm election. Um, so what they're going to be end up doing is they want to be able to turn to constituents and say, look what we did. Number one. Number two, the Democrats have the ability to do this now. November, more than likely, historically, Democrats will lose a majority in probably both chambers of Congress. Therefore, they must do it now. So we're looking for August being that moment when it's done so that they then can move forward. In the meantime, we were expecting something to hit in the month of April. Then it was towards the end of April. Now they're saying it's delayed. And when I heard the it's delayed part, and I read what I read, it was a little post on a, uh, a snippet uh, as a JPEG, and I asked for a, a, a link to it. Um, it said they were adding amendments. All right, that's something that's important to me. It's not changes to the bill, but adding amendments is what I read. Don't know if that's 100% accurate, but let's say it is. All right, that means that they are trying to amend something else having nothing to do with cannabis federal legalization. That's good news because Senator Chuck Schumer could have reached across the aisle and said, listen, don't filibuster. We're pushing this through. What do you want attached to this as an amendment to something else? Sort of giving the Republicans something so they won't get in the way. That is something that is a potential because they're adding amendments to an existing law. We don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know the minutia on that particular thing. But when I read the post that I read, that's what I took from that. To me, that's excellent news. The statement also stated that Senator Chuck Schumer said, listen, we're going to be done with this before the August break. That is exactly the time frame I continually put out there and been saying. They're going to get this done before the, the uh, congressional break at the end of summer so that they can go out to constituents and say, look what we did. That's how Congress works. And they're working on getting that done. So I look at this as actually, it's still on track. What we're waiting for is when does it actually show up in the Senate, the Senate version, of course. And it could be May. Instead of the end of April, middle May. Towards the end of May. We don't know. So cannabis federal legalization, I don't see that as being uh, delayed. I see the introduction of the Senate version taking some time. They're padding it up, and this is all good news. The foundation of this, to move on to the second point, the foundation of all this is simply this one thing. 
multiple times they have tried to push through, the House of Representatives had tried to push through banking. They attached it, of all places, the NDAA. And I slammed that left and right. I said, there's no way. Schumer's going to strip this for two reasons. Number one, you don't put something like this into the NDAA. Although Congress at this point doesn't play fair on either side anymore. Uh, regardless, this was something that Schumer kept stripping out. And I kept saying it's because he wants to make this the basis of what he is doing. And of course, everybody got all defensive on that saying, no, you know, whatever. Everybody, whatever. Um, <clears throat> banking looks to be that foundation. Because if Schumer didn't care about this, he would have let it slide through in so many other attempts. This is like the sixth time something like this has tried to go through. But he wants to make this the foundation. Perfect. Great. Because that banking gives the ability for the potential uplisting of these OTC stocks to NASDAQ. That's good news. Now, we don't really know what we're going to what kind of fireworks show we're going to see once this all passes through it might be a one ginormous dud pretty much the industry itself there's not a lot of real kind of drive to this but tracy's question to me was and i used true leave as an example you know he asked about uplisting to nasdaq this was something he was really concerned with not concerned, but he wanted to kind of get the minutia of that. He had specific questions on that particular thing. And a couple things. One of the things he asked about was, <clears throat> excuse me, um, market capitalization. You're basically, when you go from OTC to NASDAQ, you're basically saying, we exist and we're going to issue our shares tradable on NASDAQ, and this is going to be our symbol. Well, then it, it, it all boils down to how many shares do you plan on putting out there? That's an important question. Uh, we can turn to High Tide as an example, who just recently, about nine months ago, I think, did this. They went from OTC to NASDAQ. High Tide, H-I-T-I stock, targeted about 7 bucks as their IPO on NASDAQ. They looked at the number of shares outstanding and they said, well, generally speaking on the OTC, we've got this number of shares, which I think was trading at like 40 cents or something like that. I can't remember. So therefore, we're going to go in with, say, one-tenth the shares at $7, however they put that together. But basically what they're saying is we were a $500 million company or $700 million company or $70 million company, whatever those numbers are. We're going to, and let's say it was $70 million just for the easy math. We're going to issue 10 million shares on NASDAQ at $7. That's how that works. Then it's a matter of the market saying yes or no. Eh, we'll give you $690. No, we'll give you $720. That's how that works. But since high tide's already been public on the OTC, it gives anybody interested in the stock a lot of existing information. At the same time, let's say uh, they utilize an investment bank to do this. And let's say they use JP Morgan, for instance, um, to raise an extra 20 million working capital. Maybe that 20 million goes to acquiring another company or something. They can do that. They can say, instead of issuing 10 million shares at seven bucks, we're going to go for 12 and a half million shares at seven bucks. Even though on the OTC, we had less. We're trying to raise an extra $20 million, and here's the reason why. We are eyeing opportunities, so we want to have some more liquidity to do so, and so that's why something like that potentially might happen. Now, J.P. Morgan has a vested interest. They're going to turn to their 
uh, customer base and say, listen, this NASDAQ trades or OTC is uplisting to NASDAQ. It's in the cannabis stock. Look, look what they're doing. Very successful company. When they uplist, they're looking for more to drive even more success to the company. JP Morgan does not want to burn anybody in its system. So when they turn to these companies or investors, they want to see some success. It's in their best interest. It's in everybody's best interest. So when this uplist process goes through, this is kind of what everybody's working for success. Now, one of the things that Tracy had asked me was, you know, why would a company uplist? Go back to the video I did, I think just last week, regarding uh, the, the number of institutions, institutional investors in cannabis stocks. And I showed um, the NASDAQ traded which were anywhere from, say, 10, 15, 20%. I think we had one that was as high as 25% of the company was institutional investors. That's huge. Compare this to the OTC stocks. And this is where you see some interesting information. Now, I use Seeking Alpha's information with regard to... Um, institutional investors on a percentage basis. Tracy had given me numbers that were not even 1% for some of these companies. So I'm talking True Leaf, Green Thumb, Cure Leaf, the top three, um, maybe Terra Send, I can't remember. All. He gave me a whole list of a whole bunch of them. Um, and the thing is, that's what's key. All right federal legalization occurs. It's possible we see a big pop up in stocks. A whole bunch of people will start paying attention to this because stocks start sending through the roof. All right. You get people who um, don't have the ability to trade these stocks on a regular basis. The Robin Hooders who are now are going to be starting to look at these kinds of things. The NASDAQ stocks, they'll probably be getting into that. Sundial is a huge stock. Uh, Sundial Growers, SNDL stock, it's one of the bigger ones. Tilray, um, a lot of retail investors on Robinhood have access to that one. So if cannabis stocks start moving, they're going to jump in on those NASDAQ traded ones. But the OTCs are going to pop up just as much. But then the hoopla is going to die down. Remember this, as I keep saying this over and over again, it's not an event. It's a process. We're getting a whole lot of events, but it's one big process. So when federal legalization occurs in a manner that is banking related and gives these companies the ability to uplist to NASDAQ, that's really kind of the grand prize. Now, in my conversation with Tracy, I said I, I used True, True Leaf, Kim Rivers, as an example I said, you know, exactly what is her incentive to rush out immediately and uplist to NASDAQ? If federal legalization doesn't happen tomorrow, she doesn't care. The woman's just printed like $850 billion, or million in revenue. Next year, she's looking at $1.3 billion. She doesn't care. She does. But it's not vital to her business. Green Thumb, Cure Leaf, True Leaf, Terrasin, Jushi, Ascend Wellness. These are your usual suspects. They're building their foundation. They don't care about federal legalization as their number one priority. It is important, of course. In the process, eventually, they will uplist to NASDAQ. It is not going to be immediate. So after we see these big pops or the potential of the big pop with federal legalization, if we do see that, the stocks are probably going to come right back down. That's why I keep telling people, take the money and run. If that's your game. For me, I may clear out a whole bunch. If we get prices like Kona Gold, 
I didn't trade Kona Gold. That thing shot up, what, 800% in a couple days? And I kept saying, take the money and run, take the money and run, take the money and run. There's a guy by the name of Joe who showed me the chart and said, I took the money and ran. And then it shot back down in half. He's going to reload. And he said, you know, in the email he sent me, he said, your voice was ringing in my ears. And so I did it. And now look at me. He's thrilled. Multiply his account size by a factor of like three. That's awesome. You're not going to get that in the broader stock market. You might get 10% out of the broader stock market if you're lucky this year. I think we're probably going to touch over the highs again, but we'll see how East Europe plays out <clears throat> and inflation. Nonetheless, after these stocks die, die down again, Trulief, Cureleaf, Ascend Wellness, Green Thumb, yeah, they are going to go and uplist. But it may take three, six, nine, twelve months for that process to happen. But that's when the real money is going to start stepping in. That's when fundamentals that I talk about on a regular basis are really going to matter. For right now, nothing matters except federal legalization. That's about the only thing that's going to push these OTCs up. But when you get, when you get Green Thumb, who might be at like 2%, 1.5%, or less than 1% institutional ownership, which for the record... Seeking Alpha differs in its numbers, which Seeking Alpha has never been known to have the most accurate numbers. And it's, that's their service provider. It's not them, whoever they're getting their information from. Um, imagine Green Thumb Industries moving from institutional ownership of 1% to 20%. Who are those people? They're big. They're serious. They got a lot of money behind them. Now they can buy GTI. Uh, GTIB, I guess, is what their symbol will be on NASDAQ. Um, they will continue to step in should the stock continue to move lower and lower after it uplifts to NASDAQ. So we have these events where Kim Rivers will uplist. She will go public on NASDAQ. And then what happens is simply other institutions are going to start stepping in and acquiring this stock because they can acquire stocks in the OT or in the NASDAQs versus the OTCs. And federal law now allows them to do so. Now all of a sudden, less than 1% turns into 15%, a factor of 10 times. That's a lot of support. Afterwards, you're going to start seeing these in more mainstream, the uh, MSO gang. They're going to be far more mainstream in media and in conversation because it's federally legal and they uplisted to NASDAQ. And that's the moment when fundamentals play a huge role. That's when they're going to start looking at it and say, you mean this is a profitable company, but the price to earnings ratio is what? Hit the button. So we're looking for continuation of this these events in this bigger process. Tracy emailed me in, uh, an email, I think Thursday morning. And he basically said, I think I know why. Or here's, here's some rationale. Because he really was kind of fixed on this. And he said, here's what I think Kim Rivers might want to do this. You know, her responsibility is to shareholders. She's a big shareholder. So there's self-interest involved. And from a fiduciary responsibility, management's role is to increase shareholder value continually. The expectation is you buy a share of a company and on a continuous basis, management is looking to raise its value. Now, the fact that is this is not being realized in the market does not necessarily say that Kim Rivers is doing a bad job. But Tracy's 
kind of viewpoint was this would be a good push for her because then the uh, institutions would step in. And I'm not going to disagree with that at all. Management's job is to continually increase shareholder value. That is part of the process. It's not just an event. Given that, yeah, Tracy, absolutely. She would continue to do that. It's part of the process. This is what I'm looking for. Sometime early May, mid-May, late May, Schumer pulls through. Whatever amendments are being tacked onto this particular bill, it'll, they'll be done. It'll get written up. It'll be dropped into the Senate. They're going to debate it for about five minutes. Everybody already knows what's in there. Most people don't care what's in there. They never know what's in there. They're going to push this through. Then they're going to send it to the House. The House and the Senate, the two committees are going to start talking to each other, asking what stays, what goes, what can we throw in there? They're going to make the same bill for both chambers, vote on it again before they send it to the executive. Once they vote on it, once they push it through, federal legalization, most likely from a banking perspective, and given what the House of Representatives passed, uh, some blue stuff over there. Uh, I'd love to see, not that I'm claiming one side of the aisle or the other, I'd love to see Representative Mace's um, version go through as well and get tacked in there. That it's basically saying, listen, we're kind of hands off. We're going to leave it up to the states. Gives the Republicans something to grab on so there's no hurdles necessarily in the Senate. But you're looking for that reconciliation after the vote from Senate. That reconciliation then gets sent to Joe Biden. This will all be done before August break, according to Senator Chuck Schumer. Get ready. Could be very interesting. But take that money and run. Because it could easily come right back down, just like Kona Gold did. Then, the next event in this process, uplisting to NASDAQ. That's when we're looking at an industry that's legit. Till then, we'll see you in the next video.